that patrol. <laughs> Metro East Soccer is coming your way on Suburban Community Channels. We're at Tartan High School in Oakdale. I'm Mike Pete and he is Ted LaRue. The Tartan Titans host the St. Thomas Academy Cadets. Ted, we have a tale of two different teams and in the case of St. Thomas Academy, a lot of new faces, particularly with the coaching staff at St. Thomas Academy, a strong pedigree. They won it all in Class A in 2016. Lost in the section final last year to Holy Angels, but their new head coach, Brian Coleman, believes once St. Thomas Academy picks up some confidence in Metro East Conference play, they could be a contender once again to reach the Class A state tournament. Yeah, new coach, not much to change though. Like you said, this has been a program that has been very good, as you mentioned, 8-5 and 2, a loss in the section final um, last year. And they've started out uh, pretty well so far, 2 and 1. Uh, on the year uh, so far. So getting off to a good start, especially in the fall season, you know, this is the season goes awfully quick. So getting off to a good start, you look at Wyatt Isaac, three goals in a five to nothing win earlier uh, this season over St. Paul Highland Park. Uh, two shutouts for St. Thomas Academy. So if Tartan wants to keep up with them, they're gonna have to key in on Wyatt Isaac. That one loss coming to Holy Angels, a game where they were down five starters. Now Tartan, Boys soccer hasn't been a strong point over the last few years. In fact, they were winless in 2016, but they have stepped it up over the last few years and are hoping to continue that upward trajectory. If you look at the series between these Metro East rivals, the last time Tartan won was in 2015. Since then, STA has dominated, including a 10-0 clean sheet in 2017. Last year, it was a 3-0 win, but the Titans... You know, this could be a key test for them. You know it's a top-level team, and if Tartan is able to continue that upward swing that we spoke of, a win here would go a long way. Yeah, building a program um, from that, from those types of seasons, like you mentioned uh, in 2016, definitely not the easiest things to do, especially at the high school level, where maybe there's not the most uh, soccer pedigree. Tartan this season, they've been shut out twice, a one to nothing loss at Fridley, as well a five to nothing loss to White Bear Lake. Um, but this is a chance uh, to get back on the right track, and a win here tonight at home would be uh, would be a huge win going forward. A lot of confidence as they build up towards the rest of the Metro East slate. Tartan tw winless in 2016, 0 and 12, 4 and 10 in 2017, 6 and 9 last year. So the Titans are coming along. They're in Section 4 AA. A section you and I are familiar with. Ah, just a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit. <laughs> we do a lot of work at Valley Access Channels. Ted's the sports director, and so that's where Stillwater often resides. Stillwater winning it all in Class 2A last year. It was Blake who won it all in Class A a year ago when that miracle direct kick to start the extra time session, and we're underway here. It's Tartan wearing the navy blue, STA wearing the white. And Tartan clears it out. It'll be STA on the throw-in. 40-minute halves, as you know. No stoppage time. And here's something to keep an eye on should we get a close game late. This is a new rule for 2019 and beyond. National Federation of High School Association, so this is nationwide. Coaches cannot use a time-wasting ploy if their team is in front by making a substitution. And if there is a substitution, with less than five minutes, they will stop the clock. I like that rule. You've seen, uh, we've seen stuff like that covering soccer games, as you said, the last couple of years down in the St. Croix Valley uh, and Stillwater and beyond. Uh, you've seen that late in games, uh, a tactic to kind of eat up clock. Um, so I like what they did, and uh, I really like that rule going forward. We got an early corner kick here, Mike. Yes, we do. And they go the line drive route. That was number four for the cadets, Wyatt Isaac. And it was picked up by Tartan's keeper. Isaac getting a little tricky right off the corner. Um, as you said, taking it right down the line. 
Uh, couldn't couldn't quite uh, finish and get that great of a shot out of it. Tartan's got a decent opportunity. And Zach Holper showing off his skills for the cadets. That was a nice setup by Zach Holper and Tartan able to clear it away. That could have been a threat for the cadets. Tartan doing a pretty decent job here so far, keeping them out of the middle, keeping them on the outside and not allowing things uh, to get in the center near the box. As we noted, STA with some new coaches, but they are no strangers to the sport. Brian and Brent Coleman taking over after the prior head coach took the job at St. John's University, having a state tournament championship to his credit. Brian and Brent, both members of Minnesota United. Brian played before they classed up to MLS, and Brent still plays for Minnesota United. It's not uncommon for professional soccer players as we're going to have a foul following a challenge from number 12, Samuel Wishmeyer, and going down is number 13 for the Titans. Doesn't appear like we have a 13 on our roster, but we, uh, we play on. We'll see if we can get that name be here in a little bit, but a free kick coming up. Austin Murphy for Tartan. I spoke with the Tartan team beforehand, and there were a couple of call-ups from JV, but it is a free kick. Austin Murphy delivering it, and that will be wide right. 13 on the JV roster is Pong Lee, the sophomore mid. So I assume that, uh, that match could up. be him. We might have to run over there at halftime. <laughs> And I'll explain, it's been a tricky start for everybody. Tartan on the attack, and here's number 13. Flake stays down. He may have a look. Centering pass is blocked, and getting in there for the deflection was Caleb Smith. First real chance of the game there, and it comes to the way of Tartan. Good chance. We'll see if a chance like that can maybe loosen up the STA defense as this game goes on. That's looking for a counter. They try to get the ball up to Andrew Thurlow. He does catch up to it but Tartan doing a good job pinning him to the outside and they'll clear it away. That was Jacob Clendenin. Or as the Tartan teammates like to call him, Jacob Clendenin. <laughs> and Tartan's defense with a strong performance so far. ST was taking a peek and Garrett Kierzik uh, using the header. Now that's using your head. Really it is. And <laughs> They do concede a corner to the cadets, and we may get another one. Yeah, two, co two corners, not a, not a ton going on the corner kicks. They're going with Wyatt Isaac each time. We'll see what happens the third time. It's the third corner, and once again, goes right back to him. Tartan looking for a counterattack. And now STA will clear it out. You see this a lot in both boys and girls soccer. Sometimes the defense just kicks the ball past the sideline, or the touchline as they like to call it, and the European ranks just to give the defense a chance to set up. You can see the throw in, but the ball's not moving. And that'll be a goal kick for the cadets. A lot of feeling out right now. It feels both teams trying to stay in the middle, keep both uh, squads to the outside. Um, uh, eventually, you know, both teams are going to get their chances in the middle. Um, Tartan has had one, but it was well defended by STA. But a lot of feeling out, it appears, here early on in this one. Here come the cadets. Tartan getting in there. Trying to get the deflection. There's Wyatt Isaac. Isaac, as you saw in the open, hat trick in the 5 0 win over Highland Park. He has four goals on the season. And Brian Coleman considers Wyatt one of the players to watch. He said this team may not have any superstars, but when he interviewed for the boys' soccer position again with St. Thomas Academy, 
what he was impressed with was their intelligence and professionalism. They understood a lot about the game. St. Thomas Academy, as you know, a military prep school, so they don't fool around. They are high upstanding citizens, future leaders in the making, and Brian had nothing but praise for what they had to offer and what they contributed, and that was just in his job interview. Yeah, STA, uh, it seems like every year we get down to state tournaments, uh, football and 5A. Uh, AA boys hockey. Uh, it seems like they're they're always, they're always in the mix. Uh, they're always there. They're always fighting uh, for a chance to head down uh, to state. And Class A boys soccer as well. Wyatt Isaac almost grabbed the jersey of number 11 Austin Murphy. And the other sport that kicks off tonight, that might have been called holding. <laughs> Ted, a big Packers fan. Ten-yard penalty. In Still Wisconsin. <laughs> and in, in the other football, as I like to joke around when I'm calling this sport, uh, Packers and Bears kicking things off. So uh, Definitely in my fantasy draft, I definitely drafted with my heart and not with my head. I got Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Valda Scantling. So I got, I got a lot of Packers on my team this year. How so did we'll your back buddies, did they go with their heart too or did they <laughs> use their head? No, no, not too many Vikings on the other guys. But, uh, yeah, I definitely had, had a lot of Packers on my uh, roster. I was going to say, your boss must not have been pleased with that because your boss is a Packers fan too. I guess he's my boss too. So <laughs> Throw in for the cadets. Henry Murray, number 14. As you know, fall sports underway all across the state. First week of school for most districts. We've been pretty fortunate around the metro area weather-wise. There's only been a few downpours, uh, really <laughs> rainstorms. It was uh, last weekend we had a big one. But we've been pretty fortunate, uh, pretty fortunate weather-wise. Yeah, some pretty nice, uh, pretty nice clear weather on some football Thursday and Friday nights, some midweek soccer games. And of course, volleyball's indoors, so that, that doesn't really matter. But <laughs> no, that's what I like about it is you don't have to worry about rain delays. We've got a foul here. It will be charged to the Titans. Okay, apparently it's going the other way. STA number 12. Samuel Wishmeyer having a chat with the official. It looked initially as if it was going to go against Tartan. So uh, free kick for Austin Murphy. It's a boomer and headed away by an STA defender. I think that was Sean Nelson. That one, if the if Nelson is a half a step forward, I think that just gets over his head. And there was a, a forward coming right in behind him for Tartan. I didn't catch quite who it was that that could have. That was almost a perfect setup opportunity towards the net. And another great opportunity as Tartan has a corner kick here. That, I was going to say they do concede a corner. So Murphy, or yes, that is Murphy. Murphy, the free kick specialist for the Titans. Lines up another one. As you know, these types of set pieces, always unpredictable. That one found his target, but it bounces out of play. He had a good shot at it. Lee, the sophomore, and was in there trying to rise above uh, everybody else. Those corners are tough. You know, everybody's jostling for position down and around the net. And uh, we're going to have another one, it looks like. We are indeed. LJ Tao putting it in play. ST able to clear it out, but it goes to number 28, and that goes over the crossbar. Lucas Mason with the attempt, but a little high. St. Thomas Academy escapes with no damage. Yeah, Tartan's had a lot of corner kick opportunities, and it almost seems like Tartan has controlled the pace of play. They've been the ones with the opportunities. Although STA has had a couple, they've had some corners. Tartan almost controlling the pace of play a little bit here early on. Now SDA hoping to reestablish control. They had a couple of looks early, but some impressive work by both defenses. Yeah, like we said earlier in the broadcast, keeping things uh, to the outside is key. Not allowing to get in the middle, now it allowing uh, to get in behind the defense, and both defenses are set up perfectly so far early in this matchup. 
That uh, was going to be offside, an STA player was out of position there, so indirect free kick. Looked like Dylan Hool got in front. And that'll go back to STA as the free kick from Tartan. Stretched past number five, Alec Falls. Again. SDA takes over. Sean Nelson. Both teams have passed the ball really well. You haven't had a lot of inaccurate passes here early on as STA has a chance. They have a big chance right here, and Tartan gets in there for the challenge. Andrew Thurlow uncontested, and I don't know if we got another look at that or not on replay, but either Murphy or Tartan's keeper was able to dive in. We're going to take another look. And here it is, another. I mean, he gets right around him, and he, if he goes far side, and then even if he goes inside that near post, he'll have a good opportunity to maybe thinking about it a little bit too much there. I thought it was a challenge, but it looked like Thurlow just misfired there. The shot went wide left. A close call, but the Titans emerge unscathed. But as you were saying, the passing on points, and you would expect that out of STA considering their pedigree. I'm more impressed with Tartan actually passing. Um, they've done a good job in the midfield, getting things up, working things around, all along the sideline. Nothing's been too far, nothing's been too behind in some of these passes. They've been, they've been really good here so far, managing um, the passing so far. And that will be STA ball as number 13. We'll figure out his name eventually. Stepped out of bounds and went back in bounds. Can't quite do that in this sport. Although we were discussing last year's Class A final as STA takes over, forcing the turnover. That is key. They take a shot from deep, and it's a one hopper that bounces over to the keeper. I did not know until last year that the kickoff to start the halves is considered a direct free kick. The more you know. Exactly. <laughs> well, and that's how Blake was able to win in that highlight reel fashion. Good chance here for the cadets to keep it in. Good cross chance. And that'll be a corner for the cadets as number 24, Garrett Kierzik, deflected that away. Well played. If he's not there, you might have a one to nothing game and another great opportunity um, for St. Thomas Academy. But instead, Wyatt Isaac gets another corner. The fourth corner for the cadets. He was looking for William Guttery. Almost got him. Tartan able to get it past the sideline. It'll be another throw in, but Tartan holding them off. Over the last 10 years, St. Thomas Academy is 7 and 3. Of course, how much you can extrapolate from series history, it's only so much at high school and college because of graduations, coaching changes, <laughs> as you and I have seen covering high school sports. But STA certainly has been a power in Class A soccer for a long time. I'll give you the credit for this line. Graduation is the great equalizer, as you always like to say. Uh, when you have some senior-laden teams, it's hard to predict uh, as coaches and as media types like you and I, as Tartan has a really good chance. But it's really hard to predict uh, coming into the season how exactly they're going to respond, I'm sure, as a coach. It's hard to know as most of these kids were playing JV and most of them maybe weren't on varsity last year um, as this kick goes over the over the net. But it's hard, you know, when you have these teams that are stacked with seniors to see those guys come in that maybe didn't get a lot of playing time. It's tough. And graduation, definitely a big equalizer uh, here around the Metro. 23-50, still no score. Mike Beaton and Ted LaRue, uh, no, this is not an error, no malfunctions. Uh, we are on SEC for a night. 
that's the beauty about community television. There's no crossover. There's no <laughs> rivalry. There's no our, our fine director, David, isn't trying to cover any Stillwater Pony games. I'm not trying to cover any <laughs> White Bear Lake or Tartan games. Well, what are you saying? No crossover. <laughs> I mean, we... <laughs> Uh, how many how many crossovers have we had between the SCC guys and Valley Access guys? I mean, we have we a don't do of it them. intentionally. We don't do it maliciously, I <laughs> no. should say. <laughs> no, but we had a lot of fun yeah. uh, doing it. Well, hey, if it wasn't for the crossover, you wouldn't have had the, the infamous uh, cookies call from exactly. White Bear Lake, Hill Murray so uh, soccer. <laughs> soccer. Soccer on ice. I mean, <laughs> hockey. <laughs> I was thinking hockey. Yeah. Or the volleyball final we had last year with North St. Paul and Stillwater. So. No, hey, there's a lot of sharing. That's what it's all about. But it's inevitable when you get schools that overlap in sections. And we're going to have a throw in for the Titans. Let's see if they can make something out of this chance. As we, you said, they've had a couple of opportunities. Both teams, it seems pretty even. Neither side controlling the other, and they're both getting some quality looks here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I said, we've liked the passing. Uh, Tartan has definitely uh, had some chances. STA has had the best chance of the game that we saw on replay here earlier uh, in this matchup. But both teams really trying to feel each other out. A lot of midfield play here going back and forth. And besides that great STA chance that they had earlier in this one, uh, there haven't been a lot of great scoring uh, opportunities. There's been potential scoring yeah. opportunities. Uh, but nothing too serious. This is the first game in conference play for both teams. Tartan went winless in the Metro East last year. St. Thomas Academy finished in the middle of the pack, 6-2. and two. That sounds strange to say, middle of the pack at 6-2. and two, I know. They were in a conference as STA was looking to knock it in, and they almost get there, but William Guttery couldn't catch up to the ball in time. Matamidi, North St. Paul, and Hastings finished ahead of them. Matamidi with a strong program in both boys and girls soccer, and North St. Paul equally adept in this sport. And how about Hastings? You don't think of Hastings as a team to watch, but you know, the Raiders have put together some solid uh, programs. It's going to be a free kick for the Titans after an STA foul. This is a deep one. A lot of good things going down there in Hastings. Our buddy Trent Hansen is the AD down there. As he's been nice to us when we've covered section basketball uh, down there. Just renovated the football stadium with, uh, with some new turf and everything down there. That's looking really nice. Um, so, yeah, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of good things going down there. Uh, south of 94. Something tells me you and I will be down there again in February <laughs> or March. And speaking of turf, STA renovated their athletic facilities. Uh, I had a chance to connect with Brian Coleman before the game. And STA, they had some fine facilities already, so <laughs> it's not like they were underwhelming. It's yeah. the only press box I've been to that has air conditioning. That is the best high school press box I've ever been in. That is... I've done one game there, and I'll never forget it. <laughs> what <laughs> it was, game was that? Uh, it was soccer, uh, I think a couple of years ago. I did a St. Thomas Academy soccer game. Uh, I can't remember who was playing. but Was I just, it for MSBN? Or? Yes, it okay. was. Yeah. So I think I was just running. Uh, or no, I did do commentary um, on that one. Yeah, they have a very nice press box. If anybody, any high schools are looking to renovate their press box, uh, check out St. Thomas Academy that, and use that blueprint. <laughs> I've been there twice for soccer, including the last time STA won a section title in 2017. And of course, when you get to October, you're not as worried about air conditioning, but yeah. it's a nice setup. It's real open. You, it, It's a great press box. And that's not yeah. to say hey, everything else is subpar, but that is the blueprint. So new turf, they repaved the track and matched it in STA's Royal Blue. I find it ironic that they share the name with St. Thomas University, where we called a game there at O'Shaughnessy Stadium last year, and that press box is, it's pretty cramped. <laughs> the, Let me just, I'll The just, opposite. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. State-of-the-art school, right, at, at UST. Uh, the Tommy's got it going on, obviously. Um, 
Uh, maybe the Mayak doesn't think so, but that's a whole <laughs> other can of worms. <laughs> I think um, that's out of SEC's pay grade, <laughs> our pay grade at least. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, their they're press box, it's old. It's, uh, you know, if you're up in there, you look straight down, you see Cretan Avenue right, right below you, and uh, it's tight, but, you know, I guess it gets the job done, done for the Tommies every every Saturday when they win by 70. So. Well, and who knows where they'll end up, but say if they go up to D2, uh, they, might be, uh, they might renovate the place. Yeah. So new track, new turf, and even a new weight room. And Brian's telling me the weight room at STA outclasses some of the facilities he took, or he participated or he used when he was a college student at Jacksonville University and then Creighton. He's just amazed at the level of investment St. Thomas Academy has put into their athletic facilities. You know, ac athletics a strong part of their identity. And all around STA, they produce a lot of bright, talented kids. I've never heard anyone say a bad word about a St. Thomas Academy student. No, they definitely know. Um, they're definitely very respectful. They definitely uh, respect everybody um, on the field and they're yeah, they are just, uh, they're always talented. They, they have they have a lot of kids um, in a lot of sports. As I mentioned, the two sports that I'm most familiar with is obviously uh, football and hockey. Um, but, but as you said, you know, soccer as well has had some success along with other sports. Lacrosse, boys lacrosse has had some good teams. That's uh, right. You uh, called uh, one yeah. of those games last year. Or you got to see them play, I should say, when they... They were a top five team at that point. Played um, Stillwater and... They've been in some tough sections in terms of lacrosse. Um, Here's a chance for the cadets. And they tried the centering pass. I thought... I'm Interesting. It was an intriguing move. I thought Thurlow might have had a lane if he went for it. Decided to go with the cross instead. And now here's a lob that will go wide right. Interesting decision there by Thurlow. Of course, I'm not down there, but I thought... If he had taken it, might have had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Tartan's keeper, but... Yeah, it looked like he had a good no harm, opening. No it looked like he had a good chance, but uh, definitely uh, pulling back to, to see if he had a better chance um, there. But in the end, it's a Tartan kick. Indeed, a goal kick for the Titans, so... Still scoreless here in Tartan High School in Oakdale. Titans looking to get above 500, something they haven't done in some time. From the midfield and beyond, that was beautiful passing. Um, foot to foot, boot to boot there. Uh, perfect job advancing the ball right, in it, right along the sidelines. And, uh, I've been very impressed with just Tartan's passing, and that all starts with patience. He's not forcing anything. And look, you see it right there. Well, that pass was maybe a little uh, too much in front of him. Of course, you jinx yeah. them as soon as you <laughs> compliment their passing. But you're right, they haven't done anything silly or Unusual, no ill-advised decisions, really. STA's given them a couple of scares, but they've warded them off, and this Tartan team, you know, they may not be among the headliners in 2A soccer, but as we've seen, and we have the research to back it up, they're getting better every year. This could be a program that could be a dark horse if they continue this trajectory. And Tartan's got some good uh, good programs here as well. It's 5A football. You know, they've had uh, they've had some good teams. Them and Matamida, it yep. seems, in this section in 5A football. is it's It always seems like it comes down to them. It's always a great packed atmosphere here in that playoff game uh, to go to state, whether it's a section final, semifinal, whatever it be. But uh, Tartan's got a pretty good uh, pretty good football program and uh, some, some pretty good other programs that are, that are on the rides. Um, as well. And you speak of the Tartan Matamidi rivalry. It was Matamidi's section for years. They dominated that group. And then last year, Tartan finally got one against their longtime rival. In fact, they swept the pair of games both at Matamidi. Tartan won the regular season meeting and then they held on to win the section final. And Tartan football got to state for the first time in a long time. And they are a team to watch again in Class 5A. Remember that was a big story last year because, like you said, Matamida had dominated that section uh, for many years, and for Tartan to finally break through uh, was was such a big deal for that Titans football program. They're hoping to continue that this year. Action at midfield for now. Tartan looking for a downfield option. And 
Clendenin tried to hook up with number 12. I mean, even that, even though it wasn't, uh, even though the path didn't connect, it's still a good opportunity. I mean, look, a worst case scenario right here, you get a goal kick. Best case scenario, it finds the boot of the uh, of the attacker down there and, and good things happen. But I like what Tartan is doing. I like how they're uh, taking chances, but not taking too many chances. And they got another one right here. Centering pass to Tao. He had his back turned to the goal. Got the ball in the middle that time. Although Tartan has a good passing, they remain fairly on the outside. That one they got in the middle. There was a lot of traffic right there in the box, but good job. It seems like they're slowly but surely uh, chipping away at this STA defense. And if they can get a clean look at that middle lane, they could get the first strike. And sometimes that's soccer. It's patience. It's mm -hmm. not forcing anything, believing that you're going to have that chance um, later on. Because if you make one mistake, one errant pass in the midfield, it can be a breakaway uh, going back the other way. You know, soccer is it's a lot of patience. If you're patient, you know, a lot, a lot of these games are nil-nil going into the second half, uh, late in the second half. You know, 60th, 70th minute or whatever, it's still nil-nil. So, you know, if you're patient, good things will happen. And sometimes that can be hard to do. And these kids are antsy and they want to score and put uh, put some numbers on the scoreboard. But patience pays off. And as I've said in my soccer coverage, you never know when a moment could be the moment. It's exactly. one of those <laughs> games. It, it's a it's one of those beauty type games. You got to wait for it, but the payoff is worth it. If you are there to witness, well, as we saw last year in Class A, Blake winning on a direct kick from <laughs> midfield to start the extra time session. Or in girls soccer, Stillwater and Wyzetta having to settle a semifinal with nine rounds of penalty kicks. That Blake was boy soccer, correct? Blake was boy soccer. That's the and boy Stillwater boy soccer won <laughs> in extra time. I was just about to say that. Those boy soccer finals last year, I remember the uh, kick from center field from Blake, and then obviously um, our good buddy Spencer Scott with the header to win it in overtime over Duluth East for Stillwater as they took home the AA Boys State Championship. And then, like we said, the girls, um, uh, Stillwater once again. I just can't shut up about Stillwater, but anyway. Um, <laughs> um, they went to, what, eight, nine rounds of penalty kicks against Wayzata? God there. help us if you become the <laughs> host of Sports Bath. <laughs> <laughs> and in the semifinal round, I guess I'll, I'll throw in a plug too. Well, hold that thought. Tartan with the takeover and STA able to bat it over to the keeper. So Zach Holper able to deny another Tartan threat. But don't forget that semifinal round with Stillwater St. Paul Central, Spencer Scott using yeah. a heads up move. As soon as the ball was spotted for a free kick, he made a move, which you can do as long as the official you know, doesn't signal you. And Spencer, in his interview, said, I look for that sometimes. Tartan looking to make an attack here. Flake stays down. This is their first chance, and Tartan gets on the board. They've been looking for that all night, and it finally connected. He's been hanging out deep in the STA end, and that was perfect execution for the Titans in their first goal uh, of the game, and Tartan, like we said, they've had patience, and we take another look at it, threading the needle between two cadet defenders, and the finish, tickling the twine, making it one nil. LJ Tao credited for the assist. Couldn't get the name. The rosters are a bit out of order, and it's been a little tricky as I was saying at the start of the broadcast, the high school league revamped their website and haven't made it possible to print off rosters. So we're going to do our best to confirm number 13 for you for the Titans because he just scored. And the Tartan Titans up one nothing over a ranked Class A team. Yeah, they've been playing strong, and what a huge win. We said it at the top of the broadcast here, Mike. What a huge win this would be for Tartan. Such a big confidence booster. As we mentioned the struggles that this program has had. And a great defensive game so far offensively. They've had a lot of patience. Uh, 
good passing ahead. And they, they've, they've just played a really sound game. They've had a really sound game plan coming into this game. I think they knew what they had to do to contain St. Thomas Academy and Wyatt Isaac. They've done exactly that, and uh, they've been patient in their attack, and it finally just paid off. Adonai Hans is number 13. Adonai, I should say. It's up in the notes. He was listed as 34 in the program. That's why we had trouble recognizing him. So Adonai Hans, he scored two goals against Nova Classical, including the go-ahead score with 26 seconds left in regulation in a 3-2 win. So Adonai, who thought that was him, no, that's... That's the, that's the, yeah, that's that's 34. the 34. <laughs> who Adonai Hans is listed as 34 in the program. So, so you know, once you get... We've got some numbers to sort out here. One step forward, two steps back. <laughs> And it's an injury timeout, so the clock stops at 8.31, so. Adonai Hans, the senior, picking up where he left off. Throw in for the Titans. Corner. I think Tartan's gonna get a corner kick here. Yeah, they are. This will be their third. So they scored on an odd man situation. Let's see if they can capitalize on this set piece. It's Austin Murphy who will put it in motion again. That one's short, picked up by an STA defender. They have two guys going towards the post, and but good coverage there by St. Thomas Academy. But also good idea, good set um, from the set piece on the corner and crashing towards that post. Uh, they've had some good opportunities on the corner kicks, um, but you know. They just got to keep on attacking. Tartan's just got to keep on attacking, and they'll be fine, especially with the lead. You saw Clendenin racing in there to try to get an attack from deep, and it went over the crossbar. In fact, went through the uprights. Of course, the running joke around with this sport is uh, the three points, but as we know, it's not scored that way. I always, when they when they kick it over the net and it goes through the goalposts, I always think of. Uh, the movie The Replacements, when they when the, the, they they get the, the kicker um, who uh, who played in like uh, Australian soccer or something, and they always say uh, you got to go over the bar, not under it. I always think of that when they when they kick it, when they kick it through. Great opportunity for SDA, it doesn't happen. But uh, a replacement's one of my favorite movies of all time. Shane Falco. Film. Tartan moving the ball upfield again. ST able to get a momentary pause when Joseph Markert put the ball past the touchline. And Tartan trying to find someone up the middle, but it was full of white jerseys. Now the cadets looking to counter. That pass is going to be too far up front for Matthew Zander to catch up to. But Tartan does deflect it. It will be a throw-in and opportunity here for the cadets. They trail 1-0. If Tartan can survive this, this final uh, five minutes and change here, uh, they'll have a lot, of, a lot of confidence, I think, going in. And this final five minutes is, is going to be crucial. We'll see if STA can get a few more chances as well. Corner, corner, kick. corner kick. So here's one of those aforementioned chances. It's the fifth corner for the cadets. They don't waste much time with it. And offside was called. Uh, they got the corner kick in quickly, but still an offside call. That applies no matter where you are on the field. That took me a little while to get used to when I first started calling the sport. There's no set offside line like there is in other sports. There's no blue line out there, huh? No blue line, <laughs> no line of scrimmage. <laughs> yep. The Cadets had a chance earlier. And I believe 
was Thurlow who sent his shot wide left when he had an uncontested look at the net. Long way to go though, of course, and this is a team still adapting to the new system that Brian Coleman is putting in. As he, I was going to say, as he said, no superstars on this team, but he feels the confidence will increase over time. And when you have someone with the experience that he does, played professionally, and he also runs the Salvo Club, the Salvo organization as high performance director. So this guy hangs around the sport and does so even though his playing days are behind him. So St. Thomas Academy, they're not getting a drop off in terms of pedigree at the head coaching position. And when your assistant still plays for Minnesota United, as Brent Coleman does, he's a center back for the team, in case you're wondering. Helps to have that pedigree, uh, someone to look up to on that coaching staff. And it's worth noting because, as you know, in professional soccer, you play one, maybe two games a week at most. It's yeah. not like the NBA where you're playing three, four games a week or NHL. So a lot of the MLS players, Minnesota United and elsewhere, they have time to take on side jobs if they'd like. I don't know if they would consider this and take on an opportunity to develop the next generation. And Brian told me just the number of young athletes who have taken up soccer is growing exponentially and you see the buzz that has increased over time. There was a huge crowd for the women's national team victory tour on Tuesday when they took over Allianz Field for a day. Allianz Field is one of the, if you're not a soccer fan, um, I, I wouldn't call myself a huge soccer concierge by any means, but um, that is one of the best um, in, in the area of the pro sports we have around here. That is one of the best atmospheres. It's just a fun time. Allianz Field is a great venue um, for, for soccer out there. The fans are always into it at Loons games. Um, it is, it, it's definitely a, a must-see if obviously you're in the Metro. Uh, to, to go see a United game at Allianz Field. Definitely a great facility. Did a great job um, out there in St. Paul with that facility. And Brent Coleman was telling me they nailed it, the design. He said yeah. that they couldn't have done any better. The crowd noise, everyone gets into it. And I'd have to say St. Thomas Academy looking for another opportunity. And they might get one here. It'd be great to have the state tournament there. Uh, as At least the quarterfinals. As STA, I know sometimes in, uh, obviously in Minnesota, the weather in November does not uh, play nice with many outdoor, even though there's a little bit of an overlap um, for, for some of the fans. They wouldn't get wet, you know, maybe in some of those top rows. But, um, you know, yeah, that's, that, it's tough to convince people when you have U.S. Bank Stadium and some guaranteed dates at U.S. Bank Stadium to move it over to an outdoor-like facility like Allianz. I think you'll have a tough time convincing people of that. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it as a quarterfinal site, perhaps. Yep. STA on the move. Look at Wyatt Isaac. He's motoring. Tartan able to deflect it, but Isaac, <laughs> I would say he should try out for the track team. Yeah, He's got some hops. Trying to get some last second opportunities here. Well, Isaac has some zip in his step. Less than a minute to go, and St. Thomas Academy, they've been looking and looking, but Tartan just not giving them any openings in the middle. Twenty-five seconds. Tartan. Pass. Can they catch up to it? Number twenty-one does. That's Josh Crummel, who was moved up to varsity. Right, looking for one more go. It's a dribbler, and it's going to go past the net. It'll be a corner kick, but Tartan, I don't think, is going to have enough time to get it off. And they will not. So. No corner kick for Tartan, but they do have a 1-0 lead thanks to a goal from Adonai Hans in the 30th minute. And the Titans up on a Class A perennial. This could be a big step forward if they can hang on. 
you got to think St. Thomas Academy, they're going to come out with a better game plan here uh, in the second half to be able to halt some of those uh, tartan chances that they've got and, uh, and try to get deeper into this uh, tartan defense because they've done a great job keeping them out of the middle, good defense on corner kicks. So it's going to be an interesting uh, second half here as we approach that second half. We'll bring you the second half in a moment. You're watching High School Boys Soccer on SEC Sports. I'm always the first one up. I'm always up for a challenge. I'll overcome any obstacle. I don't believe in limits. I refuse to be average. Drownings are the number one cause of accidental death for young children. Simple safety steps are the best way to prevent these tragedies. Make sure kids learn how to swim. Designate an adult water watcher to watch kids in and around water. Save the phone calls and texts for when the kids are out of the water. Properly fence all pools with fences at least four feet high and with self-closing, self-latching gates. When above ground pools aren't in use, remove the ladders. When pools aren't in use, cover them. Teach kids to stay away from drains. And if a child is missing, check the pool or spa first. Consider the steps you take, then add a few more. Because you never know which pool safety step will save a life. Until it does, simple steps save lives. To learn some new ones, visit PoolSafely.gov. Since the moment you were born, I've made a thousand wishes. Wishes for your future in a world that's changing fast. Do play and laugh. Do win and lose. Do it all with confidence, kindness, and strength. And always do your best to remember that no matter what you do in this life, what matters to me is that you keep doing. The 500 mark, and not only would they do that if they can hang on against St. Thomas Academy, but this win, even though it's a Class A school and the Metro East, uh, you run into that with the mix of small school and larger schools. But hey, a win's a win, and it against a perennial like St. Thomas Academy, uh, the QRF may not look at it favorably, Ted LaRue, but. For the Titans, it would be a huge boost of confidence as you look at Josh Wendorf, who would love to add a signature win to the 2019 season. Yeah, what a confidence boost it would definitely be here for Tartan in this game. If they can hold on uh, against St. Thomas Academy, they played well in those last five minutes to keep it a 1-0 game here going into the second half. And I think they just got to keep doing what they're doing. You know St. Thomas Academy, they're going to come out and they're going to maybe change things up to be more aggressive. Uh, you know, and as time goes by, if it's still 1-0 here in the second half, as you take a look at Brian Coleman, head coach at STA, um, things are going to get more aggressive. STA is going to take more chances, so we'll see what Brian Coleman here has up his sleeve. Tartan scoring in the 30th minute. Adonai Hans off the lead pass from LJ Tao, an odd man rush situation, and that is the difference in our score. And outside of that one chance that Andrew Thurlow had, Tartan doing a good job protecting the middle. St. Thomas Academy not really able to set up anything in that area. And as we said, this is not necessarily a fluke. Tartan has been building up to a potential moment like this after going winless three years ago. Here they are with the chance to pick up perhaps their biggest win of the year. Yeah, no doubt this would be their biggest victory of the, maybe of the last couple of years uh, if they can beat St. Thomas Academy, hold them off tonight. It's going to be a tall task, of course, here as we uh, start the second half. Clock is running uh, here in half number two. But, you know, we'll, if they do do it, it's, it's going to be a big confidence booster. And maybe that will change the way some people outlook at in the Metro East this year. And not just the Metro East, but the section. Again, you don't look at 
a win over a Class A school as favorably if you're a 2A school, but for Tartan, hey, yeah. you'll take whatever you can get. After some lean years, that goal by Hans, by the way, was the first time Tartan has scored in this series since 2015 when they beat St. Thomas Academy 3-2. to two. So you're saying if they score against them, things go well. <laughs> yeah, at least if recent history is any yeah. indication, but... No, it's been mostly STA. And four of the last five years these teams have met in conference play were STA shutout victories. So not a lot of highlights on the part of Tartan in this Metro East rivalry, but they got one in the 30th minute. They would love to add more if they can, but again, even if it's just one goal, if it's enough for the win, they'll take it. Yeah, sometimes uh, one goal is all that's needed in soccer. As we said, patience pays off if you get that one goal play some solid D the rest of the way, uh, things, uh, things will go well. And sometimes when you're down 1-0, you tend to force things. You know, once you got, you know, 20 minutes, 15, 10 left on the clock, you tend to force things and get that sense of urgency. And sometimes that can lead to mistakes. Uh, but the Titans would love to add an insurance goal. And Tau, good challenge by STA. Tartan wanted a foul, they don't get it. That was Caleb Smith. And that's going to be offside on the cadets, but how about that job by Caleb Smith? Tartan was looking to set up in the middle. He runs in, makes the challenge, and changes the flow of the game. A lot of contact, but there was a lot of contact from both uh, both participants in that collision um, right there. So I think it was a solid no call there by the officials not to call a foul in that situation. Uh, but yeah, STA had another solid chance, but once again, Tartan's defense comes, comes up big. The clock had stopped, so. No play yet. The clock had stopped as Josh Wendorf was having a discussion with the officials, so STA will have to re-kick. 37-49. In case you're wondering, we're well outside the threshold of stopping the clock for a substitution, so keep that in mind, though, if the score stays the same. If Tartan does make a substitution under five minutes, the clock will stop, and that is not a statewide initiative that is nationwide. National Federation of High Schools put that rule in this year. There was an article about it in the Minnesota Soccer Hub, which is partnered with the Star Tribune, and in it, some of the coaches there said, it's not a tactic you see often. You don't see coaches trying to milk the clock that way, but I like that it's in there, as you said, because it discourages that practice. So. You can still make substitutions, as you know, in this sport. You can make unlimited substitutions, so the temptation would be there to try to eat up time. And I imagine, if, if not here, other states have dealt with this problem, and this is a way around it. Yeah, usually in high school sports, is you know, um, if you have problems like that, things will get fixed. Um, if it's not the state that does it, it's yeah. the National Federation, as we saw in this yeah, case. Exactly. So it'll get fixed in some form uh, or another. So, you know, I good rule. Um, I think it definitely, it'll be interesting to see how that changes strategies for some teams who are winning here, here late. Throwing for the cadets near the Tartan goal, and nice job by the Tartan keeper. There was an STA player ready to pounce. Number five, Andrew Thurlow. If that keeper's one step behind, Thurlow punches it in. He was waiting for it, but once again, Tartan, with a little luck and some skill, a combination of the two, they've been able to fend off some quality chances on the part of STA. A lot of almost, I think, for St. Thomas Academy. I had a teacher in high school once tell me almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So, you, you know, uh, so almost doesn't cut it, I guess, in the game of soccer. They, Tartan has done a good job of bend but don't break there down on the inside, um, not allowing anything to, any serious scoring chances for St. Thomas Academy. Well, here's a fun fact about St. Thomas Academy. As they'll get another throw in here. They have three team managers, so they all rotate video duties. As you know, every game is filmed by the coaches. 
or for the coaches to review, I should say. <laughs> that would be impressive if the coaches could uh, <laughs> film and call it. I mean, if we were coaching, you know, we would probably do that. <laughs> we would film it, we would call it, and we would coach it all at the same time. Probably a good thing we're up here. <laughs> We've got a throw in for the Titans, Lucas Mason. But the Coleman's are telling me you know, all of their games, the student managers will record on video to review as part of coach's film. So he said it's nice having three of them because they can rotate duties. Uh, not one person has to do every game. And as a stack cast operator with Major League Baseball, I can attest to how uh, welcoming that is. I mean, if I were asked to do all 81 home games, I would, but it's nice to know that <laughs> you get a break once in a while. Yeah, some depth is good every now and then. I mean, I know you, you wouldn't get tired of calling <laughs> all the Stillwater sports if you had to. Oh, no, I would never get tired. You know, winning uh, winning's never boring. Or what's, uh, <laughs> there's a saying in there that I can't remember right now, but, uh, yeah. Well, Tartan would love to do some winning here, and they – did you get on a victory, picking up the first one over Nova Classical? One, two, and one is their mark. Good chance for Tartan here. Yeah, couldn't quite string some passes together to get a good scoring chance. Yeah, nobody was there to pick that up. Tartan opened the season with a 3-3 draw to Minneapolis Edison and then blanked against Fridley and White Bear Lake. Tartan lurking again. White Bear Lake, a section opponent. On Saturday, they will take a road trip to Byron for a Saturday matinee. And we were speaking of weather earlier as we await this goal kick. Yep from Zach Holper. You know, the weather plays a factor in having the semis and championship rounds of the state tournaments at U.S. Bank Stadium. And as I understand it, I think soccer, I know volleyball is going up to four classes. I can't yep. remember if soccer is going up to three. Here's Tartan with a good chance and rolling it in. Number five, Alec Falls. And the Titans with a 2-0 lead over their Metro East rival. Yeah, they got a good chance before, just a, about a minute or so earlier, and they do it again, as you said, in the form of Alec Falls. And we'll see if we can take another look at this replay to, to look at that goal because it was set up perfectly. And a good chance right here in the box. Look, at there's two SDA defenders retreating, but he stays patient, doesn't give up. Good persistence, and he finishes, and Tartan takes a two-goal lead. You saw Sean Nelson trying to reach out for a deflection, but couldn't catch up to the ball in time. And I think doing that slowed him down just enough for Falls to catch up to the ball. And once again, those odd man rush situations, that's where Tartan has capitalized. And now with a two-goal lead, uh, this is going to be an interesting scenario because you got 32 minutes and change here left. What's going to be the sense of urgency for St. Thomas Academy? Down two goals, haven't had a lot. They've had a few serious chances, but especially as of late, they haven't had a lot of serious chances. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. And then Tart, are they going to get? Uh, are they going to kind of set back more defensively, or are they going to stay aggressive? This is a big turning point in the game. It certainly is if the cadets cannot get on the board. They almost had a look there. Centering pass deflected by the Titans. Good chance, good cross opportunity, but like you said, Tartan had some good defense. The flag goes up on the near side. Two goal deficit in the second half, uh, very difficult to come back from in, in high school soccer. Uh, so this will be, like we said, it'll be interesting to see how the SDA coaching staff adjusts uh, to the situation of the game right now, especially, you know, in these, in these dead points, especially right where we're at right now. As you can see, the clock continues to wind. I think that's in the game of soccer, that's where things can get a little frustrating from a 
uh, trailing team point of view is that you want to speed up the game, but sometimes the team that's in the lead, if they have a throw-in, free kick, they're going to take their sweet time because they know the clock keeps on running. Right. We saw that as STA was closing in, but Tartan's keeper catches up to it first. Here come the Titans. They almost caught up to another ball. That was Adonai Hans. And we've seen Tartan's prominence in those counterattacks. And Adonai Hans came oh so close to giving Tartan another chance to go up big. He's been right there all night long. He's been in perfect position a lot of the time. And you got to give credit to his backs as well. They've given him really good passes and really fed him really good lead passes and given him plenty of opportunities to score. It was LJ Tao who gave him the lead pass that allowed the Titans to go up 1-0 back in the 30th minute. Here comes a throw in. There's Jacob Clendenin. STA able to clear it. All if you got to do right now if you're Tartan is, is don't make the big mistake. Um, don't go for something. Don't go for a slide tackle if you don't need to. Don't go for things if you don't need to because you got a two-goal cushion right now. If you're just like they are right now, if you're just heading and kicking the ball back and forth in the midfield, that is perfectly okay considering we're beyond the 30-minute mark uh, here in the second half. Right now, keep playing your game. Play a defensive style, but if there are opportunities, you know, make sure you stay aggressive. Hey, because sometimes we've seen it. Uh, when you stay back on your heels, uh, bad things can happen. Uh, uh, the age-old scene goes in the uh, in hockey. The two-goal lead is the most dangerous lead in hockey because you can get complacent. Yeah, a little different here. A little course. bit different. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit different here, considering the distance you have to cover compared to a hockey rink, a uh, soccer slash football field is a little bit larger. But if Tartan knows anything about the series history and for all of the guys who remembered the beatdowns they got from St. Thomas Academy in past years, I don't think complacency is going to be an issue. They would love to get a win and a big one over a conference rival to start the season, one that has dominated in Class A for as long as they have. That will be a goal kick for the Titans. Pretty good chance for STA there. Had someone streaking down. They were well beyond the defenders of Tartan there, so an offside. Uh, might have been called anyway, but uh, a pretty good lead pass there for the cadets. They need more of that. And that'll bounce over the fence. Uh, one of the ball kids will have to climb over to get it. Well, before Tartan score, as we have a substitution, this is before the five minute mark, so Tartan can do that. Number 21, Josh Crummel going back in. What do you make of the six-week regular season? I know weather plays a part in that, so you don't want to be playing games into late October, yep. but as you and I can attest to, whether it's Stillwater or whether it's this game, no matter what sport or what school, yep. you don't get a lot of time to finesse your craft like you do uh, with football, for example, or basketball, hockey, you know, those regular seasons in high school last about three months. The fall and the spring, uh, I think, is where you get uh, the, these short seasons. You know, you got to come out of the game. That's why these starts are so quick, or, or these starts are so crucial. Sports like soccer, volleyball, and then the spring, you look at, you know, baseball, softball, uh, lacrosse. You know, starting off strong is, is such a big thing in those early season matchups. If you can get ahead of the curve, um, you know, you'll be okay. Um, but then again, there's the other examples where a couple of years ago, Stillwater softball did not start off too well in that shortened season, and they ended up making a run at the state tournament. So the cream always rises to the crop. But um, these short seasons, it's you, you got to get your legs under you right away, and you got to be ready to play immediately. Um, because if you don't come out you, immediately, you might face off against a tough team in sections tougher than you'd like early on. And But, you know. It goes quick. I mean, we were we were talking the other day, and you know, it's it's closing in right now, on you know f four to five weeks until section tournament time, you know, section semifinals and section finals. So, um, you know, weather is a great. You know, we talk about graduation being an equalizer. Sometimes weather can be an equalizer here in Minnesota as well with these short seasons, especially in the spring. 
Volleyball is a little more forgiving because their regular yeah. season ends around mid-October, right before NBA weekend. But soccer, you're right. NBA weekend, the section finals yeah. are held there, and then the state tournament is more spaced out. They only have about a game, maybe two, in the first week of October, and then you jump right in uh, to section playoffs. And I think that's why they're... Here comes STA. Sorry to jump on you, but it looked like they were setting up an attacking chance, and they'll have to... Try again as they yeah. get called for offside to finish up your thought. Ted. As I was saying, I think that's why they're trying to start these seasons earlier. August 22nd was the first day for games this season. I mean, we'll see if they jump it even further than that. But they're trying to get a head start on the weather. You know, even though they start a week or two before school starts, um, they're trying to get a head start uh, on, on these seasons uh, as well. And I get what the, the high school league and everybody's trying to do with these schools and scheduling and get started early, but it seems like it gets started earlier and earlier um, every single every single season. At least you have to worry about blizzards in October <laughs> compared to April. Yeah, those April, man, we've had it the last two, two years. years. It's, you know, what, what, to start the spring season on May 1st. You know, it, it never, you know, usually, I should say usually, who knows? I was going I'm, to say. Knock I, on wood, this is the year we get a May snowstorm. But uh, usually once you get to May, things, you know, you get a lot more rain, the snow dissipates, and you don't have as much snow showers. Um, but, yeah, the last two years, uh, two years ago, all of the April games uh, were canceled. And I think this year there might have been like and one or two April games. Hold on. We've got <laughs> stoppage in play. You see STA, they've been trying to spot up on those free kicks right away, That's and the official said no. <laughs> to go on your point, if we were to start in May as – we await the free yep. kick from the cadets. I just don't know if there'd be enough time because even the spring sports have to play so many games. I get what you're saying. It's hard. That's when they start. Any, well, the last two years, at least, the years I've been around, that those are that's when they've started. Because um, I think they what they're what they they want to start. You know, April. I think it's like Early second April second week of softball. April, first week even, just because there's only so much of a window. The thing is, they can get in these games. Uh, on lacrosse because they have the turf fields around most of the fields in the metro uh, area. So all you got to do is plow the field of snow and let them go at it. Um, but obviously in baseball and, and softball, you can't do that all the time. 23-22 left in the second half. Mike Beaton and Ted LaRue on SCC Sports. Spring seems a long ways away, though. But it I know it's going to be right, <laughs> right around the corner. These high school seasons, they seem to go very, very quickly. Well, especially if you're covering teams that make deep postseason runs, you know, up in SEC territory. Matavidi was one of those schools. Yep. Tartan now making a push, and this win over STA, if they can hang on, would be a big step in that direction. Good cross right in the middle there, and now another great opportunity, but it's going to go well uh, beyond the net for Tartan. Um, Westy Martino had the second opportunity, went wide left. They've had most of the most of the chances here uh, in the second half. STA really hasn't had much, and as we approach uh, the halfway point here of the second half, STA, I think you're, they're coming to a point down two with 22 minutes to go. They might have a good chance here, but they got to be more aggressive. Well, they tried to bump forward there, and that will be a throw in as STA was on the move. William Guttery couldn't catch up to the ball, but he'll get an opportunity to make something out of this throw in as Wyatt Isaac lines up. A potentially big sequence here for the cadets, and that's a header that will be batted out of play, and I believe it was touched by Tartan's goalie, so a corner kick and another set piece for the cadets. Yeah, that was an odd angle, high lobbing kick on a second bounce. Had to get his hands up there. We'll take another look at it right off the header. High lob, and yeah, had to get his hand on it. Otherwise, that one was going to go under the bar and into the back of the net. A corner kick opportunity here. They get a goal here in the next couple of minutes. We might have ourselves a game. And those high lobs are tough to play. STA goes low. Centering pass was right there. Header, another header, and it bounces over the net. Oh, and a great save. Second, third chance opportunities for St. Thomas Academy. Man, that is 
Oh, that's got to be heartbreaking for the cadets that they weren't able to finish there. Another look on the replay. One save there. Has a right on his foot, headed around a couple of times. That one goes off the top of the crossbar. Another header and great recovery for the save. Boy, that is a great chance, but not quite for the cadets. Sean Nelson with the header pass to Matthew Zander. And Zander, that was a well-placed header. He couldn't see the net. You saw his back was turned. So he could see the ball, and that was impressive that he came that close to scoring without being able to see where the net was. Uh, spatial awareness, crucial in any sport, but I imagine if Xander was able to see the target, maybe a different story. But once again, St. Thomas Academy, they've had a couple of scoring chances, but have missed the mark by inches. And that's been the theme for the cadets in this game. Now right at the halfway point here of the second half. Although STA has dominated the time of possession here in the last couple of minutes. Uh, let's see if Tartan can get a couple more chances now at their attacking end of the field. You know how much Tartan would love to get the clinching score here. They're up 2-0 already. After all those shutouts those past years. Three in a row. Three years in a row to STA. That'd be great to shut them out here tonight. And not to mention that winless season in 2016. Thank you, okay. uh, just a few years ago for them to turn it around from 2016 winless. If they can get a shutout victory against STA, that'd be quite the turnaround to be able to capture that victory here tonight. Goal kick for the Titans, and they did pick up a section win last year. And, and as I've said, no matter the sport, sometimes progress is incremental. I mean, you'd love to go in those quick turnarounds like the Minnesota Twins have been on this season in Major League Baseball. As that's going to add another wrinkle, at least to my calendar. But for the you Titans, you always stay busy, don't you? <laughs> uh, there's always something. Twins in the spring, summer, and fall, and high school sports, but. The starting team, I, I don't imagine too many of these kids were around for that 0-12 season in 2016, but you hear about it and you know, no one likes to go a season without a win. It can be a deflating experience in a sport where sometimes winning is above all else as Tartan was looking to cash in another opportunity. Goal kick for the Cadets as the shot from Alec Falls was wide right. But for the folks who have hung around these last couple of years, you know, went to that four win season in 2017, six win season last year, waiting for that big moment. As you said, when will this pay off? This is their chance to show that the effort they put in to rebuild the program, build it back up. This could be one of those games where the payoff is a big one. And you got to think the kids around the program, obviously, are, you know, they're involved. They're in the youth programs. They're in the younger uh, grades. And they hear about it. You know, you're, you're always looking up whatever youth program you're in. You're always looking up to the varsity and what the varsity is doing, no matter what sport it is. Um, so they're, they know it. They're aware of it. And, uh, you know, who knows? They may have been say, we're going to be the class. That, that kind of gets Tartan Boys Soccer back on the map. Nice job by the Titans. The keeper was out of position. One of the Cadets players thought the ball crossed the line, and I believe that was Lucas Mason playing keeper for a minute. Another great chance for St. Thomas Academy, but it falls short as the goose egg remains on the board. The keeper almost misplayed that shot from Matthew Zander, but how about Lucas Mason? Yeah, that was a great awareness. Great awareness to be in the box right there at the right time and play goalie for for just a split second. And that's all they needed is there's a whistle here around midfield. And as long as you don't use your hands, position players can take over for the goalie if the goalie is out of position as they were in that last one. And we have our first yellow. Yellow card, it looks like on uh, STA's Matthew number 10, Zander. Matthew Zander. That yellow comes in the 44th minute. Or I should say 64th minute. As time continues to progress, you know STA is going to get 
a little bit more aggressive, take a little bit more chances. They've had some really good chances here the past couple of minutes, whereas Tartan really hasn't had much possession uh, of the ball. They're going to have a decent chance here if they can catch up to it, but they won't. But um, STA's getting the chances they need. It's just they, they can't put the ball in the back of the net right now. They had two moments in particular, one from Thurlow where the shot went wide left, and then a header from Nelson to Matthew Zander. Zander couldn't see the net, almost put it in anyway with his back turn, but his header went just over the crossbar. But they'll have a throw in here. St. Thomas Academy, they need a score, and they need it soon if they want to have a reasonable chance of drawing even with the Titans. And that throw in will now become a corner. It's the seventh corner for St. Thomas Academy. Tartan with three. So plenty of set piece opportunities for the cadets, but so far, Tartan has held them off. There's a header to Abraham Yosef. Ball's loose and Tartan trying to get the clearance. That ball got through in the box. Just couldn't quite get all of his forehead on it to kind of get it towards the net, down towards the net. De decent chance for St. Thomas Academy, but 15 minutes left, down two. Time is not on their side. Henry Murray sent that out of play, goal kick for the Titans, and probably at the stage of the game, Hans looking for the centering pass. And he finds his target, and Alec falls. STA clears it out. And if you're Tartan, I think you're at that stage of the game where you might take your time on these throw-ins. OK, I guess uh, not. You got a pretty quick one there. <laughs> All right, well, so much for that strategy. I think they're still trying to remain aggressive. They're still trying to get the game ceiling goal on the board. And I like that, that they're remaining aggressive, not playing back. In, and they're doing everything they can to, to maybe add a one more possible goal to the scoreboard. Garrett Kiersick with the deflection off of Isaac to concede a throw in and that pays off for the Titans. It'll be a goal kick. And again, that's why you do that. You'll give up a throw in if it gives your defense a chance to set up and more often than not, it works in your favor. You see Tartan's gonna take their time here on this goal kick. Got some substitutions as well for the cadets. They're putting in John Gaylord, number 24. The Commons, the coaches at STA, Brian in particular, spent the last 10 years as part of the Woodbury staff. Applied for the STA job, as we noted, didn't make the cut. But you know, sometimes. You get a second opportunity. And now you see St. Thomas Academy being far more aggressive in their challenges, trying to force a turnover and catch Tartan out of position. Really making a play for it now. There's Hans. And that'll be scooped up by Hopper. Good job just firing it on net. You never know what's going to happen. Make him play the length of the field. Going back over the last 10 years, Tartan has not recorded a shutout in this series. You don't get bonuses for a clean sheet, but that would be something. Falls with the centering pass. I thought he had the look, and I thought he did too. And for Great. the look on his face, it looks like he realized the chance he may have had, but sometimes you're a little too unselfish. Great footwork to get open. Um, past the two STA defenders. And that's one of those deals, just rip it on net, see what happens, try to go for that top corner. But STA, man, that they gotta be in high energy mode here and try to get to the other end of the field as quickly as possible. If Tartan's game plan has gotta be get the ball to that end, play at that end, pass the ball well, <coughs> try to milk some of this clock. Looked like they wanted to do more than milk it. 
I know sometimes we talk about the middle, trying to set up down there. It's the best scoring chance, but even if you're at an angle, like why not take a shot? You're up 2-0 if it doesn't work. That's what I said, make him play the length of the field. Make right. him go all the way down, and that chews up some a good amount of clock as well. Corner coming for the cadets. They're eighth. And that ball bounced around. It went behind the bleachers, so that will eat up a few more seconds here. No, it's going to be a throw in by Isaac and the header out of play. Just goes high and wide. Another decent chance on the header for the cadets. But the more of these opportunities that go by, the more that window narrows as we approach the end of the tunnel that is this game. And intriguingly, it's St. Thomas Academy making the substitutions here. Tartan getting one of their own in, but it's the trailing team that is making the subs, trying to figure out what combination will work in hopes of working their way back. Hans is ready to chase down that one. Instead, it will go over to John Gaylord. Can you use a term that I, I use very often during the winter months? Tartan's got to be in penalty kill mode. Uh, if you get the ball, clear it. Get it to the other end. Make St. Thomas Academy go the length of the field. So make sure you're in clear mode at this point when well, we're under 10 minutes to play here in this one. And that will be a foul charge to St. Thomas Academy. William Guttery was making contact with a Tartan player, and the official said maybe a little too much. So a free kick for the Titans. And Hans, he was out. He was well out there. Right idea, but... Only so much real estate, so STA picks it up again. But we've seen Tartan do such a good job throughout this game. If St. Thomas Academy has an attack, there's someone there to back them up. And as you see now, they're getting in there, just knocking away passes. Tartan, they've been doing the little things, the big things. And look out for the Titans. They may not be the pushover they once were a few years ago. This could be a legitimate dark horse to keep an eye on, not only in the conference, but in section four. Section four double A, that is. Of course, we'll have our eyes uh, on that section. Uh, of course, working with uh, the two-time defending section four champions, uh, Stillwater Ponies, uh, of course, with our work out there. Three time, uh, actually. In the Valley, three time. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, two state titles in three years. I was not here for that first one. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, Tartan might be a sleeper if you look in Section 4 uh, right now. So still early, but this would be a big confidence boost and a big big win in terms of section standings. Yeah, this certainly would not be a win you could overlook. Again, St. Thomas Academy lost to Holy Angels. They were down five starters. And Coleman, Brian Coleman, uh, praised the work ethic and the grits of his St. Thomas Academy team in those circumstances. But you know, dropping a game to Tartan, it will sting. But again, new coach, new system. Sometimes it takes a little while to get used to. And uh, you are not going to look past them in Section 3, Class A, where they've been a potent program. And if this result holds, it's going to be a tale of chances here. And who cashed in? It was Tartan getting those odd man rushes. First, Adonai Hans, and then Alec Falls dumping them in in those odd man rush scenarios. And St. Thomas Academy, whether it was through a set piece or they had get one of their own in the first half, uh, an odd man where. Thurlow had a look at the goal, wasn't able to put it in. A lot of time winding off the clock here. I think you saw the frustration there of the STA goalkeeper. He had the ball, was looking for a goal kick. Now they can bring it back for a free kick. And this just continues to wind the clock. Murphy doesn't wait long to put it in play. Hans with the pass. And Falls takes a shot. He had an opening. And 
He wasn't the best of ones, but hey, like you said, take a shot, see what happens. You're up 2-0, so even though Falls didn't put it in, it's of no consequence, but you've got to watch out for the counters. STA almost caught up to it. William Guttery was close. And I mean close to getting a potential counterattack. Been the story of the game all night, Mike. Uh, very close, but they, they just can't break through uh, right now, as Tartan has done a good job bending but not breaking there on their defensive strategy. And that might be a whistle there, a little shove after the goalkeeper got his paws on that ball. As you said, frustrations might be a factor here. This is not a school St. Thomas Academy is used to <laughs> losing against going in their series history. The cadets will be back in action on Tuesday in their Metro East swing. They host Hill Murray. And then September 12th, that'll be a big one when they go on the road to play Matamidi. Zephyrs, a perennial in Section 4 Class A. Matamidi got a lot of good programs. Of course, SEC will be covering them here throughout the year as Tartan's got another breakaway. Alec Falls, challenge from behind. No call, I believe. Oh. No, we play on. Tough break for Falls. He's been on it up front. In the front lines, he's made some great reads and has given Tartan a few of those breakaway chances as you alluded to. And here's a school I didn't know was around. Uh, September 28th, St. Thomas Academy will host a program. I did not know this was a program until I looked it up, Hiawatha Collegiate. You and me both. <laughs> Ball is loose. There was a St. Thomas Academy player hoping to pounce it in. <laughs> the keeper, number 99. I'm not quite sure who that is. Again, 99 not listed on the roster sheet, but he has been <laughs> banged up a little bit. He's had to corral some balls that have eluded his grasp, but just like the rest of this game, he hasn't given up a score. And with less than four minutes to go now, here's Tartan making a substitution, and this is one of those examples of the clock stopping, and here was last year's conference standings. Tartan, not a single win, nothing. And then you had STA at six and two towards the top of the conference. It's uh, a lot has changed in, in a year from one fall to another. I don't think there's any doubt about that in this last 345. Uh, if Tartan can shut out STA, what STA did to them three consecutive years, what a confidence boost. We talked about it all night long. What a confidence, confidence boost that will be for this Titans program. As we noted, 2016, 0-12, not a single win. 2017, four and eight. So they got back on the win column. Last year, they didn't win a game in conference, but were able to at least get into the second round of sections. Soccer usually plays more than eight. You'll have teams of, or pools of nine or 10 sometimes. So well, they won the play-in game. Yep, yep. And this year, barring something crazy, they'll already improve on last year's conference record. And what a save by Tartan's keeper. Nice save. I mean, you, you nail that one in. You got two minutes and change to go. Who knows what can happen? A great save. Keeps the score 2-0. No cookies for you. <laughs> <laughs> but a corner for the cadets. Another look. Just Isaac. getting his hand up just in time. And another shot that went wide. Wyatt Isaac had another good pass. On the cross. And just missed the mark again. That's been tough for the cadets. They've been knocking at the door all game. Yeah, 2.11 to go. Here's Guttery. Again, with another cross attempt. Played by the keeper. Bounces back out to Guttery. He'll try to play it on the header, and he gets there. Now Yosef. Push from behind, There's and that will be a foul just outside the box. Right on the edge there. They're going to have a nice free kick opportunity. 
All right, unfortunately, go not a PK. You would love an uncontested yeah. look, but you'll take it. Free kick for Wyatt Isaac, just outside the penalty box. Tarn's going to take their time setting up to try and milk this clock a little bit. Guttery curves it, oh. saved by the keeper, and no goal. I think it bounced over the crossbar. Did they score? I think they scored. The ball did end up in the back of the net. And they're going to rule it a goal, I believe, because SDA yes, is rushing to midfield. Yep, they're setting up at center field. The clock does stop. We have to take another look. I didn't know who put it in. It was set up by a brilliant play by Guttery. And they are wasting no time. They got to go quick. A 2-1 game now, and here they come. You got to attack. And that will be another it. foul. Wow. A trip on Tartan and another free kick, almost at the exact same spot. Yep. The clock stops with 108. Got a solid minute left and a nice free kick opportunity. But you play 78, 79 minutes, and then you turn it on here late. Hey, better late than never if you're St. Thomas Academy, I guess. And it was a brilliant free kick by Guttery. The Tartan keeper couldn't get his hands on it. The ball, I thought, bounced over the crossbar. Apparently it didn't, and somebody knocked it in. I wish I could tell you who scored. My apologies to you, St. Thomas Academy fans, but it was crazy. This one. A little high. Right. Sliced it a little too far to the left there, but. <laughs> As I was saying, here's a look at the prior free kick. Let's see who knocked off it in. The it post. Went off the top of the post, and, and it was headed, headed in, in yeah. by number 10. So it was Matthew Zander who scored. And that is the first goal of the year for Zander coming. Oh, oh my scores. goodness! We're tied up! <laughs> Are you kidding me? What just happened? Rowing the boat all the way to a tie game! Row, row, row your boat <laughs> gently down the Mississippi! <laughs> Life is not a dream for the cadets. They've tied it up when they were on the brink of defeat. Under wow. 90 seconds to play, and they score two. Let's see, off the header, misplayed, and just fires it. I don't think the keeper was expecting that. It's a tie game. Wow. <laughs> and if we do go to extra time, we'll play two five-minute periods. STA would love to close it out. We might have to take another look as it looks like we are heading to extra time. I got to see who scored that. <laughs> Two goals in about 90 seconds. The ball was trying to be headed out of there by Tartan. There was a lot of pressure. Cadets were applying a lot of pressure. Just trying to head it out, and it just went right to a cadet. Like you said, we'll get the number and the, the name of the uh, kid here who scored, but he just fired it off from well beyond the box. And I don't think the keeper was expecting that to be fired off so quickly. And we got a two to two game here. We got overtime. Like you said, patience. Sometimes your <laughs> moment doesn't come until the 78th minute. <laughs> but it did. And like Tartan scored on those odd mad situations, we'll yeah. take another look at this goal. STA just playing off of Karam. Right there. There's right. the header. And you got two Titans right there looking for the ball. He just fires it home off the one hop. Was that Xander who scored? I couldn't get a good look at the I wasn't, number. Yeah, I was, wasn't able to quite look at the number there. Maybe but one of the fans in front of us can tell us who scored that one. <laughs> we're on the STA side. <laughs> so we're going to have two five-minute periods of extra time. No golden goal in regular season play. So we'll play the full 10. And if no one scores or we stay tied, the game will end in a draw. But all right, if you're Tartan, you were up until the last couple of minutes. Looked like you had the win in hand. Now Josh Wendorf has to regroup and get his unit focused on this overtime period. What is he telling his team? Well, they, they just got to calm down. They got to regroup, like you said. They got to regroup. They got to forget about what just happened in the last 90 seconds. I know that's going to be difficult to do from a player's perspective. But you got to forget about it. You got to move on, and they got to go on the offensive um, right away. Um, hey, boy, this is just amazing how, the, how this all happened. And one goal and another um, right there. And a 2-2 two -two game. They might have gotten a little lax there late in the game a little bit. 
But if, right now, if I'm coach, I used to say, you know, we got to be on the offensive right away. Okay? It's a brand new game. Brand new game right now, and, and they got to dial it in. And for St. Thomas Academy, you've got all the momentum riding into this extra time period. As we take a look once more at <laughs> why we have overtime. Here's the first one. Set up by Wyatt Isaac. He runs by. And a boy, Hoff. And that was a brilliant free kick by Guttery to set up the score from Hansen. Crossbar. And that one went in. And we'll see if we can catch a number here. It moves fast. I think that was Xander. It was definitely a double digit number. I couldn't quite, it looked like it was Xander. But I couldn't, couldn't quite 100% confirm that. But boy, a lot of, you know, off the goalkeeper, off the bar, headed in. That other one, just fire it from, you know, what is that, uh, more than 20 yards out. You know, kind of two very odd goals. I'm sure not exactly how STA drew it up at the beginning of the night. Um, but it doesn't matter because they are still in this one as we're in overtime. So Tartan looked like they were going to pick up their biggest win of the season, get their first conference win in several years. And now they find themselves even with St. Thomas Academy, as we noted before. No golden goals in regular season play. That changes when you get to postseason. I've always found that interesting. Fans definitely got their money's worth here tonight. Had an <laughs> overtime game in the, in the, the first girls, of our doubleheader. Right. Which ended in a draw between Tartan and St. Paul Central. And well, again, STA, they've got the pedigree, so they just stayed with it. They were relentless on the attack, and sometimes a couple of weird caroms, a couple of crazy bounces. I talk about that a lot in hockey, but it yep. works just as well in this sport. And Matthew Zander, who had not scored at all this season. Wyatt Isaac, we were touting him as the player to watch, but Zander, right place, right time, and he knew what to do with it. And now look at STA going on the attack, going on the offensive. Isaac. He lost it. Good challenge there by Austin Murphy. And let's go back. Those plays were set up. Well, the first goal was set up by a free kick, but those yep. late Tartan fouls, they got a little too chippy at the end, and you know, that cost him, as we saw. Those mistakes and the patience by STA to finally get their opportunities, as you said, with that first free kick. Uh, yeah, it finally worked out for them. Patience pays off for the cadets. And we were discussing earlier about Tartan just trying to clear it, eat up time. Those free kicks, you know, they stopped the clock, of course, but they were right outside the penalty box. And the Cadets almost had a chance for the go-ahead score. But Dylan Houle sends that wide left. You can tell they're playing with more confidence. You can tell that these late-game heroics have lifted up their spirits and given them a little bit of a boost. And on the other side, for Tartan, you can tell they're a little confused at what's happening. They haven't been in this type of situation where they surrender a two-goal lead late and then have to battle back. Well, on Tuesday, this Tartan team emerged victorious from their battle with Nova Classical. Adonai Han scoring the go-ahead with 26 seconds in regulation, the go-ahead score that got Tartan the win. And now they could find themselves having to settle for a draw or a potential defeat, depending on how this overtime session plays out. And we were talking about shutout there for for a long time late in the second half and and it's amazing how quickly this has turned and how quickly the topic and discussion of this game and the trajectory of this game has, has quickly turned and flipped a complete 180 in favor of the blue and white of St. Thomas Academy. Well, play until the clock hits zero. Now Tartan trying to set something up downfield, unable to do so. Can the cadets respond? Xander from deep. Oh. Almost. I think the keeper got a piece of it, and they're setting up for a corner, but 
And you want you want to talk about confidence. Xander is full of it. In fact, he might be overflowing with it if that shot is any indication. Another look, and well, if he doesn't get his hand on that, it's game over. It's into the back of the net, and STA has a one-goal lead. He is just, it's, a, it's almost a challenge. How far back can he go? Another corner coming up here for the cadets. This will be their 10th, and you can tell they have been the aggressors as of late. Ten corners, Tartan with just three. In Tartan, their scores came on counterattacks. SDA, plenty of set pieces. The ball is loose, and Tartan able to clear it. Couple of hops right there, dangerously in the box. SDA recovers, trying to get something set up in the middle. And Hans will boot it away. Bit of a push, and that gives the ball right to Falls. Tartan may have a chance here. Falls fires, and... Goalkeeper got a piece yes. of it, I think, yeah. Holper got a piece of it, but that push by St. Thomas Academy... Okay, no, it was... Uh, it's going to be STA ball with 13 seconds, so they're just going to make sure Tartan doesn't get a piece of it before time expires. But that was almost a mistake on the part of the cadets where that push allowed Alec Falls to catch up to the ball. So <laughs> St. Thomas Academy escapes a potential hazard and will play another five minutes. We play 78 minutes of relatively um, slow-paced, uh, easy-going, smooth soccer, and then what has just happened these last six and a half minutes? <laughs> the action has heated up as T.A. gets a couple of wild goals to tie this one up at two goals apiece. And now they got a chance to walk out of here in Oakdale, a winner here with five minutes left. And this will be the last overtime period. Teams will switch sides. There's Tao, he was looking for Hans up front, can't find him. And this will be the final five minutes, no matter what happens. If we remain in a tie, the game will end that way. Good set here for Tartan. Hans was lining up his shot and it's wide left. Beauty of high school sports, you never know what can happen. Crazy things happen all the time uh, in high school sports games. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. Some crazy, the craziest moments in sports I've seen have no doubt about it coming in the high school and the high school age group. Uh, and this is just another example of how great it can be to cover high school sports on a weekly and nightly basis. Well, look at last year's state tournament in boys soccer. Both games settled in extra time and in the case of Stillwater they had a couple of big moments en route to that 2018 state championship and like we said with the girls as well nine rounds of penalty kicks and we've had plenty of in your seat drama here play out thanks to a last minute rally by St. Thomas Academy it looked like they were out of it they were going to walk away in defeat, and at the very least, you know, even getting a draw would be good for the morale. A win would be great, but avoiding a loss after Tartan went up on you on a couple of counters, you'll exhale somewhat at least. Yeah, draw right now, I know they wanted to win, and a draw is going to give them confidence, but I just don't feel the where, what position they were in before, and long lead pass up ahead here. It's not over yet. A challenge by the cadets, and that tackle goes uncalled. John Gaylord with a nice defensive play there. 2.40 left. That's what you don't want now, are any miscues. Because as we've seen on both ends, a mistake can end up into a scoring chance. Tartan might have one right here. There's the lob to 34. Can't catch up to it. Hit from behind. No call. 
And that was in the box. Had it been called, Tartan would have had a penalty kick. So St. Thomas Academy playing some aggressive defense here, but not enough for the official to blow the whistle. If you're just tuning in in the last 10 minutes, you have great timing. <laughs> there has been all kinds of action here late in the in regulation and now in the overtime periods. LJ Tao sends that one wide right. St. Thomas Academy upping their physicality in these last few minutes. Tartan in the viewpoint of the official got a little too physical at the end, conceded two free kicks. One of them led to a goal and another didn't directly lead to a score, but it gave St. Thomas Academy the field position they needed for Matthew Zander to punch in the carom for the equalizer with less than a minute to go in regulation. And we have just over a minute left to determine if we are going to have a victor or if we're going to get out of here with a draw. One minute. One minute. A little bit of contact over there on the far side, but I think it's going to be a corner. It will be. Here for Tartan. To the ball by rushing to get it out to the corner mm -hmm. and a great chance for Tartan. See if they can come home a winner here tonight. And I'll start with a good corner kick. Austin Murphy puts it in play. Less than 40 seconds. Oh, he was, there were a couple guys right on the far post. A good job by the keeper leaping up to grab that one. Zach Holper, perhaps the biggest save of the game. Cadets. If Guthrie can catch up to it. He might have a chance, it didn't have the best of looks there, and he is disgusted. He was hoping to get a better shot at the goal. Split the defense pretty well there. Uh, just needed maybe a stride or two of separation to be able to get a better shot at that one. Blake stays down, Tartan. Oh! Hover with the big save, and that will keep this even. Tartan was right there. We were talking wow. about almost, and that time Tartan just inches away from a potential game-winning goal. Josh Bell in disbelief. He can't believe it. He's upset. I might be too. Bell was that close, but Holper beat him on the foot race to the ball. And that clear up by Holper will end this game in a draw. Unbelievable finish. You talk about if STA had an extra stride at one end of the field. For Tartan, if they pull the trigger one stride earlier, they might have had a walk-off buzzer beater win here tonight. What an exciting last couple of minutes in regulation and then the 10-minute overtime period. Wow, uh, that is about as an exciting end to a soccer game as you are going to see anywhere. Well, as we said, Tartan, had not scored in the last three years of this series and going back to the last 10 years between these two teams, no draws. So something new. So we'll recap the scoring quickly for you. Tartan's goal is coming in the 30th minute from Adonai Hans. As we take a look at St. Thomas's scores, Matthew Zander scoring both to make it 2-2 and that's how the game ended. Alec Falls scored in the 48th minute for the Titans. So STA goes to 2-1-1. One, and one. Tartan goes to 1-2-2. One, two, and two. Ted, I'm out of words to say. <laughs> well, I guess I'll pick up then. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was an uh, just an absolutely unbelievable finish. Um, STA for 78 minutes. They couldn't quite get great opportunities, and finally they got some, and then Tartan couldn't quite pull the trigger in time. A 2-2 draw, but Tartan got to be happy with their effort here. An exciting finish. It ends in a draw. And if this will set the stage for what should be a fun-filled Metro East Conference season in 2019. That does it here from Tartan High School. Thanks for watching High School Boys Soccer for Ted LaRue and the rest of our SCC crew. I'm Mike Beaton. We'll see you next time.